Hello and welcome to a quick overview of how to install and configure VMware's vCenter Operations Manager 5.6, a component of the VC Operations Management Suite that provides comprehensive visibility and insights into the performance, capacity, and health of your infrastructure and business critical applications. vCenter Operations Manager, or vCOps, is actually very easy to install. A detailed deployment and installation guide is available, but most people should be able to install the product just by watching this video. The end-to-end -end process should take about 30 minutes to complete, but a lot of that time will be spent waiting for things to complete or restart, so your actual time spent is really closer to maybe 10 or 15 minutes. The installation itself is made up of four easy steps. To begin with, we will simply review and verify the prerequisites for installation and make sure we have gathered all the information we'll need. The second is to download the OVA and deploy the VCOps virtual appliance. The third step is configuration. We'll log in and run an initial setup wizard, answer some simple questions, and then we'll be ready to get started on our fourth step, which is to license VCOps, which we can do either with a vCloud suite license or a VCOps license. Let's begin by looking at the short list of prerequisites for installing vCenter Operations Manager 5.6. Based on the size of your environment, the requirements for installing VCOps will be slightly different. On the screen, you can see the prerequisites for each of the three different tiers of environments. A small environment, or one up to 1,500 virtual machines, medium, up to 3,000 VMs, or a large environment, which includes up to 6,000 virtual machines. There are two different VMs, one for the UI and one for the analytics. You'll see in most cases the Analytics VM will pull in a few more resources. Please try and determine what size you're going to want to use for either the evaluation or permanent deployment before you begin. Now as far as software requirements go, in order to collect from a vCenter server using vCOps, that particular vCenter server needs to be at 4.0 Update 2 or later. Now for a system running the vApp itself, it needs to be running on a vCenter server that is also 4.0 Update 2 or later. And the ESX that is hosting the vApp needs to be at ESX or ESXi 4.0 or higher. And here are the supported browsers needed to access the UI, Internet Explorer 8 or 9, or Firefox 3.6 and above. Now finally, this won't come into play very often, but there are some ports that are going to be used to access either the vApp through SSH or through the browser. Those ports are highlighted here on the screen. There is also one tunnel that is built between the two VMs, the UI and the Analytics VM. That tunnel uses this particular port here, 1194. And again, that should not be a problem in most environments. Now, let's go ahead and get started with the installation itself. The first part of the installation is to create an IP pool. Let's do that by clicking on the Data Center, going to the IP Pools tab, and then clicking on Add. We'll give this IP pool a name. In our case, we'll call it the VCOps pool. Now, if you already have a pool associated with a specific network, you may get a message that the network or the pool already exists. You can go ahead and leverage that pool. In our case, the purpose of this IP pool is to pull in some metadata. So when the vApp starts up, based on a specific IP address we give it, it will leverage that IP pool to get the other specifics, like DNS information, subnet, and default gateway. We're not actually going to enable this IP pool. Now to continue with our setup, let's go ahead and put in the subnet for our IP pool and the default gateway. Again, we're not going to enable this pool. We're just using it to populate information for VCOps. Now let's go to the DNS tab. And here we can put in our DNS domain information and the IP of the server for DNS. Finally, let's click on the Associations tab, where we can choose the networks that we want this particular vApp to be connected to. In our case, we're going to select the VM network. It's the only network we have in this environment, so we just click VM Network and say OK. Now, this screen will allow us to take just a second to review the configuration and make sure that we got everything right. And at this point, we're done creating the IP pool, and we're ready to deploy the OVA and the vApp itself. Now to begin that step, let's go ahead and click on the cluster that we will be installing VCOps to and select Deploy OVF from Template. And now we'll browse for the OVA file itself. 
Now, it is possible that the package may have been saved as a .tar file if you downloaded it from certain browsers. If this is the case, simply rename the .tar to .ova. And to continue, let's just open that file up and click Next. The next screen will simply verify that this is the VC Ops Manager 5.6 installation. And we'll go ahead and click Accept for the user license agreement. Now, if you wanted to, this screen will allow you to change the name of the deployment. We're just going to leave it as VMware vCenter Operations Manager. And we'll choose exactly where we want to install it. We're going to go ahead and drop it into our Management VMs folder, which we've already created. And now we have the opportunity to choose small, medium, or large for the deployment configuration. Again, small is less than 1,500 VMs. The text on the screen outlines the requirements from a hardware standpoint. Medium, 1,500 to 3,000 VMs, and large, up to 6,000 virtual machines. Our installation today will be small for under 1,500 VMs. Now, you do have the ability using the vApp to upgrade at a later time. It's actually a very simple process. It can be done through the product support team, or you can do it on your own. All you really need to do is give these extra resources to the virtual machines in the vApp, restart the vApp, and it will automatically reconfigure itself with the new sizing parameters. Now, let's continue with our installation here and go ahead and click Next. And for the resource pools, we'll go ahead and move forward with the default. Now, we'll choose where we want to store the VM files themselves. We're going to choose the Management Infrastructure 2 data store. And now we need to pick our provisioning. Here, thick provisioning, eager zeroed, is preferred. It's important to note that choosing thin provisioning could have adverse effects on performance. So if possible, stick with thick provisioning, eager zeroed. Now we have the opportunity to choose our IPs. Transient is not recommended at all. You can use DHCP. And you can actually switch back and forth from DHCP to fixed if you find later that you prefer one over the other. Now, there is a knowledge base article on this process. And again, VMware support can easily walk you through the process if you need it. For our environment today, we're going to go with fixed. And the next thing we need to do is choose our time zone, then put in the IP addresses associated with our two virtual machines. First, the UI virtual machine, and then the analytics VM. Now, these two IP addresses obviously need to match the subnet settings of the IP pool we created earlier, so they can map to the IP pool subnet and grab those extra parameters, the DNS, default gateway, etc., that we put into the IP pool. Now, once complete, we'll go ahead and hit Next. This Next screen gives us a chance to quickly verify that everything has been set up correctly. And one quick hint here to save yourself a step, check Power On After Deployment to start up our virtual machine immediately and we'll go ahead and click Finish. Now at this point, it's going to do a standard OVF template installation, deploy it, and go ahead and start it up for us. As you can see, it's powering up the vApp and powering on the virtual machines. So after a few minutes, we can see that the virtual appliance has been successfully deployed. You can see the two virtual machines, the Analytics VM and the UI VM have started up, and we can go ahead and hit Close here. Now, let's go check out those two VMs, and there's a couple of ways we can do that. First, we can look at the console, and if we see the blue screen of the administration console here, you'll know that this particular VM is likely up and running. We'll check them both here, and it looks like they're both running fine. The other way is just to simply launch into the UI itself. We can either open up a browser, point it to the UI VM's IP address, this .11 address, or again, to save time, we can simply click on the Available button, which will launch us directly into the interface. And this first time we log in, that will take us directly to the administration UI. It's taking us there since this is the first time we've actually logged into this VC Ops deployment, so it knows that we need to log in as an administrator to complete our setup. And we'll do that by logging in as admin and the password as admin. And VC Ops will automatically launch our first time initialization wizard. And we can just follow the steps to get everything configured quickly. We'll need to put in the IP address of the vCenter server that is hosting this particular instance of vCOps. Again, logging in with the username administrator and our password. Now, we shouldn't need to change the analytics IP address. That's all set. So we'll go ahead and hit yes to the authentication request. The next thing the wizard will ask us to do is to change our passwords. 
The current admin password is admin, and then you can go ahead and change that to your new password. It will also ask us to change the root password of the two virtual machines themselves. The defaults here are VMware, all lowercase, and then we can go ahead and change it to our new password and click Next. Now, we will need to go set up the specific details for the vCenter server we're going to monitor. In our situation here, we're actually going to monitor the same vCenter that we are sitting on. So we'll need to give that a name. In our case, it's our lab vCenter system. That name is actually going to appear in the UI later. Then we'll enter either the fully qualified domain name or the specific IP address, which is what we'll do here. Then the registration user. Now the registration user needs to be someone with administrative privileges in the vCenter system. We'll go ahead and use administrator and the appropriate password. Collection users are optional. If for some reason you don't want to use the administrator to do the collection, you could change that here as well. You just need to make sure that the particular user has administrative rights and specific read rights to the objects themselves. Our next step is to look for plugins. Here VCOps is going to look for any old Capacity IQ systems installed in the environment. If it finds any, the wizard will prompt you and walk you through the process of importing all that data. It's important to note that the particular CapIQ system has to be installed and have a plugin in the vCenter that we just added, and you can only bring over one CapIQ system's data. The next step is to look for other linked vCenters. If you do have linked mode on this particular vCenter, the wizard will let us know where the other vCenters are that are linked with this particular vCenter, and it will ask if we'd like to monitor those as well. It doesn't use linked mode to do any of the monitoring, but it is a nice step that reminds us that there might be other vCenters out there. Now, we don't have any others running in linked mode in our setup, so we're just going to go ahead and hit finish and let the wizard register all of these settings with the vCenter server. Now, once the registration is done, it will bring us back to the registration page of the administration UI, and that's the end of the wizard. Now, we can see that we have a vCenter server registered. Here are all of our credentials. And here's the name that we gave it, the Lab vCenter system. Now, we can also see that this particular installation of vCOps is licensed at the foundation level. Now, there are several different levels of licensing. Foundation is the lowest level, or the default that it starts with out of the box. In other words, most of the features and functions have been turned off, and the application has been stripped down to its basic foundation level. To get access to the features that we really need to have the highest visibility and insights into our performance, capacity, and health in our environment, let's go ahead and fully license vCOps. We can go back to vCenter, go Home, and then let's click on Licensing. Then we'll go to Assets, and we'll look for the vCOps that we just installed. We'll right-click and change the license key. Now, as we mentioned earlier, there are a couple of ways to license vCOps. If you have a vCloud Suite Enterprise license or a vCloud Suite license, you may use those as valid license keys for vCOps. Or we can add a new key, which is what we'll do here, just to show you how easy that is. Here's our new key that happens to be for an Enterprise edition of vCOps itself, and we'll say OK. And then it comes up to say that it is licensed. VCOps does have a process that runs periodically to verify and update its license. Now, the best practice at this point is to either go to the admin UI and restart the VCOps service, or simply power off the vApp and restart it so that it sees its new license, which will give us all that new functionality. Now, at the same time, let's go ahead and also shut down this vCenter client and bring it back online so the new plugin is available and running as well. And at this point, we've completed rebooting the virtual appliance for vCenter Operations Manager, and we've restarted our vCenter client. We can now go into the UI, onto the Summary tab, and click Available. And please note that this time it's taking us to the regular vCenter UI. And we'll log in using the credentials we set up earlier. And we can see vCenter Operations Manager is indeed installed, running, and has already started to collect our data. Now, it will continue to collect data over the next several days, and as that data collection continues, these other badges on the screen will also start to fill in. We could also view this vCOps information from within the vCenter client itself just by clicking down here in Solutions, and then Applications, and selecting vCenter Operations Manager. 
and we'll see the exact same dashboard that we saw in the browser. Now that completes our installation of VC Operations Manager 5.6. For more information on VC Ops or any of the VMware management products, please visit vmware.com. Thank you.